So we have two people, Jason Barr and Jacob Power, both hold that strong emergence is magic or impossible. With Jason Barr, he has been having a great time on Facebook posting pictures, mocking strong emergence and ridiculing it, saying things like, remember kids, it ain't magic as long as you word it right. Jason Barr also said, quote, if one accepts explanatory continuity, then we must explain our emergent states of non-physical consciousness as being extensions of a fundamental non-physical consciousness, unquote. With Jacob Power, he says, Complexity is a cop-out. Complex quantitative interaction doesn't get you something non-quantitative. Jacob Power also asked, how do non-physical properties strongly emerge from physical properties? What is the mechanism through which this happens? So I want to go ahead and address these challenges. The first thing that needs to be done is to define what the difference is between weak and strong emergence. According to systems innovation, weak emergence is the phenomenon whereby new and unexpected patterns emerge due to the interaction between the parts. The sheer number of parts and interactions makes it computation extremely difficult to compute based upon elementary parts and their rules. However, from the weak emergence perspective, given sufficient computational capability, it would be possible to derive the higher level phenomena and thus they are seen to be theoretically a derivative. New phenomena and patterns do emerge, but the reason we cannot predict them is that the number of interactions between components of the system increases exponentially with the number of elements and we typically do not have the computation capabilities to deal with this. With weak emergence, it is possible to compute the high level phenomena, but typically much easier just to look at it directly. Thus, this weak emergence can be understood as a kind of explanatory emergence. That is to say, the emergent features are ontologically and causally derivative, but in practice, they are explanatorily irreducible due to computational complexity. New rules may appear to emerge at the different levels, but ultimately, if we had the computational capabilities, we would be able to understand all of the rules at the different levels with respect to the lower level rules. Thus, if you had an extremely high level of computation capability, you would not need to focus on the higher level phenomena, but understand it from first principles. One could look at it as caused by purely discrete cellular parts. According to systems innovation, an event is thought to be strongly emergent when the high level phenomenon derives from low level events, but a complete description of the emergent pattern is not reducible, even in principle, to an account of the elementary parts and their interactions. Along with irreducibility, downward causality is commonly cited as a criterion for strong emergence. Strong emergence entails the idea that something truly new emerges at the different levels of organization that cannot theoretically be reducible to accounts of the elementary parts. The whole is something truly other than the parts. Thus it makes sense to talk about qualitatively different levels or dimensions to the system as the rules that apply on one level become replaced, at least partially, by rules of a qualitatively different nature on another level. These higher level patterns then can exert a downward cause on their constituent parts, affecting their structure and functioning. Strong emergence describes the direct causal action of a high level system upon its components. Qualities produced this way are irreducible to the system's constituent parts. Now one objection I want to cut off at the past before I go any further is the notion that the mechanisms that produce emergence only apply to weak emergence and not strong emergence. This has been said or implied by both Jacob Power and Gunter Beckley. First off, they are both committing a question begging fallacy. Since they don't substantiate that claim, they just make a self-serving accusation. Secondly, it's simply false since both weak and strong emergence are the result of systemic complexity. It's just to a more radical degree or magnitude with strong emergence. 
So is strong emergence magic? Well, of course not. Anything that has a plausible reality-based explanation is automatically not magic. Jason Barge is being biased in that it is in his self-interest to claim strong emergence is magic because it makes a stronger case for accepting idealism. Any explanation given would render the notion of strong emergence being magic absurd. It's just that no explanation given will emotionally satisfy Jason Barr and probably Jacob Power or overcome their bias in favor of idealism. And so they will dismiss any explanation out of hand and revert back to the disparagement, particularly with Jason Barr, that strong emergence is magic. So how are emergent properties produced both weakly and strongly? What is the specific mechanisms involved such that one can say it is not magic or that which is generated ex nihilo? Well, ironically, the very complexity that Jason Barr mocks and laughs at over and over is the answer. The very nature of complex systems is what creates emergent properties. Complex systems entail system dynamics which quote, can exhibit properties that produce behaviors which are distinct from the properties and behaviors of its parts. These system-wide or global properties and behaviors are characteristics of how the system interacts with or appears to its environment or of how its parts behave, say in response to external stimuli by virtue of being within the system, unquote. The specific mechanisms involved that create emergent properties in complex systems is the ability to function as a network, which is holistic. The second mechanism, and to me the most important one, is a complex system's ability to be nonlinear. Linear systems are directly proportional. Nonlinearity entails the ability for an effect to be more than its cause. The sum can thereby be radically different from and more than the parts that make it up. Nonlinearity is the exact mechanism that disproves Jason Barr's claim that we need to have explanatory continuity. The third mechanism is chaos theory or edge of chaos, or as I want to call it, systemic chaotic perturbations. Complex systems are characterized by constant dynamic interplay between chaos, unpredictability, and self-organization, orderliness. This results in the ability to, quote, possess the potential for radical qualitative change of kind while it's retaining systemic integrity, unquote. Thank you for watching.